Hi, I'm Dr. Natasha Iyer, here again with Dr. Shabnam Daskar. We're from Better, where we help you feel, look, and live younger. We've been doing a series on all sorts of things related to fat and weight loss and ketogenic diet and, you know, things that people get frustrated about because there's so much conflicting information. In our last video, we talked about time-restricted eating and intermittent fasting. So Dr. Carr is going to explain in very simple terms. See, I blogged about this and I talked in my newsletters about it and patients still say to me, I'm confused. Like, I, I don't get what this whole thing is. Like, what's the difference? Isn't it the same thing? Like intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating? I'm like, well, they're not the same thing. They're not exactly the same thing. <laughs> so let's clear all this confusion. Time-restricted eating. Tell us what the data is mm -hmm. and how to do it. Okay. So time-restricted eating, basically, uh, and most of this came from, I read an article, this was in 2015, I think. The article came from a research paper which was done by Dr. Sachin Panda at the Salk Institute at uh, La Jolla in California. And the article came out in a very respected journal. So, And the name of the article was, I think, um, something to do with... Oh, I'll, I'll get the name later on. Something to do with smartphone, uh, using a smartphone app for uh, finding out about you know, people's, how, uh, how erratic people eating, people's eating behavior is. So what did they find on that study? Number one is people eat at all times of the day and night. And as Dr. Panda described in, in, when he was talking about the study, your, your mouth is open as long as your eyes are open. <laughs> So, my mouth is open even longer, I think, because I think I talk in my sleep. <laughs> Your mouth is open eating, is what he meant. <laughs> so, anyway, so what they found is, uh, so this was a human study, which is fantastic. And they used, basically, they just used an a phone app, and the phone app is available on iPhone and Android as well. It's a free app. We'll tell you which uh, where to go to get that app in case you want to use that. Uh, app to track your own eating. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they just uh, basically people just track whatever they ate. They just took pictures and they got uh, you know captured and you know, the data was analyzed later on. So number one is people ate at all hours as long as their eyes are open, the mouth is open eating. And the other interesting thing was though this article talks about calorie intake, we know that you know calories are not everything. What is there in those calories matters a lot. So what happens is a lot of the calorie consumption, so basically a lot of the eating happened in the, in the later half of the day. And we know that, you know, if you are dealing with excessive body weight, one of the major challenges is insulin resistance. And the way your body processes food, your insulin also is, it matches your biological, uh, your body clock. So you are, I'm trying to simplify it. I don't think I'm succeeding a lot in that. No, it's fine. So basically, you can process carbohydrates better in the first half of the day versus in the second half of the day. So the point in, I'm trying to make is for some of you, you know, if we tell you that, you know, your blood sugar is not optimal, you're not saying you're diabetic. So maybe you are thinking, I don't eat a lot. Like, you know, I don't eat a lot of carbs. But some of you have found out that you're eating the, your carbs in the evening time rather than in the first half of the day. That's when you get home. That's when, <laughs> that's, that's when it's available. That's when you have time. And that's when you're not going to choose a broccoli, right? You were saying I should drink my wine in the morning. That's what I just heard. I should have my wine in the morning. As you, as you say, you know, it's night in some part of the world. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Okay, so one smaller part of the study was where about eight or nine people, instead of eating for the 15 hours of the day that they normally do, they decided that let us restrict the eating time to 11 hours. So 10 to 11 hours of the day instead of the 15 hours. So not a lot of difference, just about a difference of four hours. And they still continued eating their you know, the food, whatever they were eating, they didn't change the eating patterns at all. But at the end of the study period, what they found is one thing they had lost weight. Okay. 
That's fantastic. They had not changed the food they were eating. So can you imagine if you even, if you change the type of food you're eating, if you're not eating what is healthy for you now, if you change that, how much of a difference that's going to make. So they, they found that their mood was better, their sleep was better, and the most interesting part, because we know, you and I know how difficult behavior modification is. The most interesting part is one year after the study was over, these people continued doing that time-restricted eating because they liked being on it. So how wonderful is that? Okay, so we won't do uh, intermittent fasting today. We'll do that mm. next. Yeah. Um, but I just want to say a few things. So that is amazing. So instead of eating 15 hours of a day, uh, eat 11 hours of the day. So just make that a shorter time frame that you're eating. I'm hearing something very concerning and I want to address that, even though the study didn't. And this is the problem. Like we have studies and data and all of that. And you know that all information can be manipulated, right? It, it's just how it is. But I'm hearing from this uh, 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 permission to eat WTF you want, <laughs> no. right? And so uh, I just want to be clear that when we're trying to live healthier, happier, longer lives, you know, because you're eating pizza and McDonald's right now as part of your 15 hours a day of eating, and so, you know, in 10 or 11 hours, you're going to cram in all that crap in a shorter period of time. No, I, I don't want that message to come across. We want this to be normal food. Now, you know, in our practice, we're recommending low carb or paleo or gluten and grain free or elimination diets or, you know, like whatever it is that we're doing, um, it's extreme for a lot of people. So what we're saying to you is still be reasonable, still be logical and still be health focused and mindful that food is fuel and if it is burning fat and losing weight that you're after starting with time restricted eating is a really good place to start exactly. what i found for myself was you know if i try to just make it past the noon hour into one or two o'clock going without anything and then eating whatever i want after that and my whatever i want is probably my bad day would be the good day some people dream of having, <laughs> yeah. as you always say, right? Yeah. But I mean, let's be clear that we still want to encourage you to live a healthier life. We want you to make better choices. We want you to make better food choices. But for now, if you did nothing else, just shorten the time frame. I've got some patients who say, I, I just won't eat after six o'clock. Um, you know, that might not work for you. You might only get home at six o'clock. So then it's till eight o'clock. But whatever you do, do something. And that would be the message. So here's some evidence and data that says, shorten the time frame that you eat, eat the usual foods you're used to eating, and you will see some results. And the chances are, in a year from now, you'll maintain those results and those habits. So I think, if you're just looking to get in shape, uh, looking to finally make a difference and get some results, this is the perfect place to start, especially if you've tried everything, especially if you're the yo-yo dieter, if you're, you know, you're fed up and frustrated with everything because nothing works, well, here's something. So it's not eat less, but eat over a shorter period of time, which inherently we hope means you're eating less too. Yep. And uh, the name of the app is My Circadian Clock. So you can go to the website, my, M-Y-C-I-R-C-A-D-I-A-N-C-L-O-C-K.com. And you can download the app. It's a free app. So some of you are thinking, no, I don't eat for 15 hours a day. Just track it and see. <laughs> You'll see the difference. You, you know, that, that's interesting because it's like, you know, you walk past your kid's plate and you put yeah. something in your mouth and then you're going here and, and you see the cookies in the lunchroom. I don't allow cookies in the clinic, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have fresh apples. But, but you know, it, it's that little grabbing habit. And then we've been taught to graze right? We were told for the longest time, five meals a day, mm -hmm. you know, snacking all through the day. All of that is old news, guys. Like it really doesn't hold, it might work for some, 
but it's certainly yeah. not going to work for everyone. And the rules of healthy living have changed. The rules for weight loss have changed. The information for calorie counting and all of that has changed. And so that's why we have New Rules for Better Living. So join us, www.newrulesforbetterliving.com. Nice.